Escape to the Country here on BBC Two in half an hour. Welcome to Garden Invaders. As ever, we're here to help some gardeners in despair. Sven's here too. I've come up with a made-to-measure design that's guaranteed to transform the most boring garden. The only catch is the garden owners have to answer Mark's horticultural questions to win these lovely plants. Absolutely. Guys, can you take those back to the shop? They've got holes in them. <laughs> Today we're in Nottingham to invade the garden of Susan Montgomery, who's being helped out by her mum, Norma Tulsi. Susan has two jobs as well as looking after her four children, so she's been too busy to get to grips with the garden. And her Swedish husband, Henrik, is described by Susan as the least practical man in the universe. So she's desperate for our help. Nice shed, girls. Oh, that's not a shed, that's a Wendy house. Is it? Yeah, that's the children's Wendy house. Well, it's not very attractive. Well, it was built in 1905. <laughs> So what's the story with the garden then? Because um, how long have you been here and that kind of stuff? Been here nearly six years, and uh, the story of the garden is it's what made me buy the house, because I, I loved the garden so much. It was so big, and living in the city to get a big garden is um, is quite lucky. And and then of course for the last six years we've just ignored it. Why have you ignored it for six years? Well, because um, gardening is expensive, and I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, I mean, I know how to start the petrol mower. Gardening's so. expensive. Yeah, how expensive, expensive is it to just get an old fork and dig it over and, you know, Very put expensive. some shrubs in it? Very. You could help out, Mum, because you're good at gardening. She won't <laughs> let me do what I want to do. So. Well, it's not your garden, Mum, is it? No, but I, th I would like to think I have a big C. <laughs> <laughs> is, she al is she always been like this? When yes, you were always, out? always, which is why she's out here all day and I'm not. Really? Yeah. Bossy? Are you bossy? No, I just state it the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is gonna be. I think we're gonna be in trouble yeah, today. This is, gonna, <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Who's gonna be in the garden doing the gardening with Sven, and who's gonna be doing the questions with me? Well, I'm not scared of work. I'd prefer to work. So you're gonna be in the garden? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's you. You've got to put up with Mum. <laughs> we can't, Susan. Yeah. This way, Chuck. What I was thinking is because we're concentrating on this area of the garden, yeah. which looks like where the kids play anyway, mm -hmm. that we do something that's quite natural and, oh, thank you, it's already in a sort of woodland setting, so I was mm -hmm. thinking a children's play garden down here, but also somewhere that she can use as well. So, what I was thinking is if we can put some kind of nice seating area between these two trees, because that yeah. these trees create a really nice frame to that bit of the garden and yeah. also creates a sense of enclosure. And also, a seating area at the back over there as well, so it's going to be quite a user-friendly garden. The Wendy house is in a bit of a state, so some kind of renovation along the lines of my granddad's house, because uh -huh. he's got a house out in Sweden, and I love the sort of natural feel that you get out yeah. in the woodland over Sounds there. Sounds lovely, and It gosh, makes yeah. perfect sense to do it down here, because it's, it's, I mean, it's a huge, huge garden. Thank you, mine. Ah, we're one of mine us for, for the good. day. <laughs> I mean, it's a massive garden, so this little corner here, if we can make that usable and a bit safer for the kids, I think it'll be Wonderful. lovely. Shall we get on with it then? Thank you. Nice one. <laughs> I tell you what, you can't get away from the noise around here, can Pardon? you? What? Hey! <laughs> Oh, it must be the invaders already at work in your garden with machinery. It must be. Bodes well, though, doesn't it, for a big transformation if the machines are out? It does. Excited? Very. OK, well, they are too, because they need you to get plants. The groups of plants all been chosen by Sven to fit his design and also hopefully to match what you want, OK? We start with the first group, which are trees. Lovely. I you love like trees. the environment, don't you? You I love do. your trees, OK? I love the trees. That is a must group for you. OK? Down here. Okay. OK, into your neighbour's swimming pool that sprung a leak and is now full of plants, OK? Do you know what these are? Hostas. Yeah, read the label, didn't you? You told me to. Lovely plants. Slugs do love them, but you can keep the slugs off, they look gorgeous, and particularly when they're in flower. Then over here, ferns, OK? Very kind of ancient plants. You were really into kind of the earth and the kind of friends of the earth kind of thing. Oh, yeah. They'll look big and kind of jungly, which we've got, I'm sure the kids will love them. And finally, over here, the shrubs. Okay, these are the plants you've no doubt had your eye on. 
in the garden centre, have you visited a garden centre ever? I have. Have you? Yes. Well, there are no plants in your garden to speak of, are there? No, I know, I don't, I don't buy them. I just look at them. You just look at them. Yeah. Excellent. Window shopping. Yeah. Well, now you can have them in your own garden, okay? Lovely, lovely shrubs, these, all right? But behind them, the finishing touches for your garden, okay? Hammock. You got oh, a hammock? No. Fantastic. I'd love the hammock. Very nice. That could be yours. Okay, but it'll be a question that your mum has got to answer later on to get that, not you. Okay. Okay. All this lot could be yours. We need to crack on and get you some plants. All right, your first group are these. The silk tree. It's a deciduous small tree with fern-like leaves and clusters of fluffy, bright pink flowers in late summer. They're best in a sheltered, sunny spot with well-drained soil, and they grow to a height of about six metres. Next, Hawthorn, another small tree. It's deciduous and it's hardy. It tolerates moist soil conditions and prefers sun. It grows to five metres. And finally, English oak, everyone's favourite. It needs planting in fertile, well-drained soil with some sun and will grow to a whacking 28 metres. Good luck, Susan. Thank you. Conifers, which remain small in size, are called what? Is it pygmy, dwarf or miniature? I'm going to go for... Oh, brave. Be bold. Miniature conifer. You're going for miniature conifer, and that is... the wrong answer! <laughs> <laughs> that is... That is... The wrong, the wrong answer. answer. The it's answer dwarf. is what does that say? Dwarf. dwarf. Is that, you were going to go for that I as your second go for option? Dwarf. I was. I was. Never mind, Chuck. You stick with me. You'll be fine. Okay. Don't worry about the trees anyway. You've got loads of trees in your garden. Now I did have big ideas of renovating this little Wendy house and turning it into a kind of Swedish summer house. But the problem is we found a bee's nest right underneath it. Now we've been onto the council and they've advised us to steer clear of the area and keep the noise down to a minimum. So they're going to call us back and advise us a bit further a bit later on, but I think we just need to leave this area till later. Now, under here, what I've decided to do is build a bench seat. Now, we've got this gorgeous old apple tree. It's the ideal spot to have a nice shady seating area where you can look down on the rest of the garden. Now, here, we're going to have a little gravel path that is going to work its way onto this really natural-looking seating area. Now, we've got this new material that I've never used before, which is called driftwood paving. It's these really big chunks of old logs have been drifting around in rivers for about 90 years. And down the bottom end of the garden, we're going to have another seating area, led to by a winding gravel path. Now, what Norma's doing is digging out a trench. Now, in here, we're going to put a little curved wooden wall, a bench right here, underneath the shade of the trees again. It's just going to blend in really nicely with the natural feel of the garden and give you another vantage point into the rest of it. Ah, you're still a bit sad about that, aren't you, the old trees from earlier? Yeah, don't be sad though. Okay. Okay, because we've got more great plants, and this is the little group up for grabs. We have three types of hosta for Susan Hosta Fortunii Var Albopicta, Hosta Gold Standard, and Hosta Fortunii Ario Marginata. They're all hardy deciduous perennials grown mainly for their sculptured leaves, although they do have spikes of bell shaped lavender flowers in summer. The big difference between them, obviously, is their different coloured leaves. They need planting in moist soil with some shade, and watch out for those slugs and snails. They love them. I love hostas. Particularly when they've. Have you seen the ones in flower over there as well? Uh -huh. That'll give you an impression of what they could turn into. Okay, here's your okay. question for them. Good luck. Okay. There's right. <laughs> kind of a small theme going on today, by the way, okay? Because here's another kind of smally question. The small plants originally found in high altitude and often barren terrain are called what? <laughs> you clearly have no idea what I'm talking about. But there are three options. Are they called alpine plants, scree plants, or mountain plants. I'm gonna have to guess. I'm very nervous. I'm nervous for you now. Alpine plants. You're going for alpine plants. I don't believe this. <laughs> tell me, tell me. It's the right answer. <laughs> oh, we just chuffed a bit about that. Yeah. 
I've just got off the phone to the council, and because we've got this bee's nest under here, what they've advised is that we just be as quiet as we can around this area. Now, bees are becoming quite rare these days, and they're one of the best pollinators you can possibly have. And we've got these gorgeous old apple trees, so they can only do good. What we were going to do is sand the whole shed down and repaint it. The best thing, I think, now is if we just gently do it with a wire brush, very quietly. And then what we're going to do is paint it this red colour here. Now, in Sweden, you often see a colour almost like this on all the houses, on the barns, all the farmhouses are exactly that colour. So we're going to paint that. Often with sheds and Wendy houses, you want to paint them a colour that makes them blend into the background. But the idea for this is to make it really stand out as a feature. You may be wondering, Susan, why I'm sitting as if I've fallen off the wall. Because I'm a bit low slung here at the moment. And that's because I'm slightly worried you might be able to see the question. If okay. I sit further forward, all right? OK. Because we don't allow cheating on this show. Okay. I, I know. You know that, don't you? I know. Firm but fair. Now, what is it you do as a job? I'm a therapist. What kind of brain job? Mental? Something like yeah. that. Yeah? You sort people's minds out. Well, I help them to sort their own minds out. Ah, I need help. Well, I could facilitate that. Could you sort that out? I could facilitate Also need an iron as well. Yeah, I can sort that too. Yeah, an ironing board would be good. Sort out the old shirt. Now, you've done well with the hostas, but to be honest, I don't think your garden's going to look as good as it could look with just hostas in it. Do you agree with me? I agree with you. What would you really, really like in the garden? Ferns. You'd like some ferns? I'd love some ferns. Well, how fortunate is that? The classic woodland plant is, of course, the fern, and there are literally thousands of different types of them. We've got three for Susan. Two types of Dryopteris felix mass, CRISPR and Linearis polydactyla, and Dryopteris wallichiana, which is the wood fern. The first two, CRISPR and Linearis polydactyla, are easy to grow woodland ferns which are semi evergreen. They've got typical fern shaped leaves, although the Linearis polydactyla's leaves are narrower and more delicate. They all grow to a height of about one metre and they enjoy moist, shady situations but will tolerate some sun. Here's the question for them. I don't think you'll know this, but I think you'll probably have a guess. I've got a okay. guess. Which plants provide colourful red and yellow stems in winter? And this one's not multiple choice. I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying okay. to get rid of the tension there. Okay, okay. Okay, so the options are, is it cow parsley, dogwood or cat mint? I'm going to go for dogwood. It's the right answer. <laughs> It's fair to say you're quite pleased about that. I am pleased about that. Good, because we like to make people happy on this show. Good. Excellent. I'm going to take some of these ferns, there's a lot of them. I'm going to take some of them into the back garden and see how they're getting on. And when I come back, we'll try and get you those lovely shrubs over there. OK, you can keep that, by the way. There you go. See you later, honey. Bye. Hey, that will have cost a fortune, because this kind of stuff doesn't grow on trees, you know. Oh, no. Hey, worse. hey, hey. <laughs> good, eh? <laughs> I know I've used it before, but I'm just trying to lighten the mood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't work, did it? <laughs> anyway, you're working hard. We have ferns. You do, you have ferns. Lots of them, actually. Lovely job. Yes, working very hard. It was all going desperately downhill at the start, though, because we lost the trees. Oh, no. Yes. They're the ones I really wanted as well. Well, not only you, because um, Susan was particular. That was the thing she absolutely wanted was the trees. But I think yeah. so. I mean, she's got a lot of trees already here, so it's not the end of the world. But... Anyway, so you're putting a seat around here, that's good. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, cool, it's nice done a one. really nice job of that. It's really simple to do. If Steve can do it. <laughs> no, exactly. If the comedy carpenter can do it, anybody can do it. Yeah, so, but it's all going really well. We've got the paving... Swimming pool yeah. in here. Not, not very deep, though. <laughs> well, you know, sort of ankle depth is perfect. OK. So we no, we're going to... This is going to be a sort of log paved area, it's sort of driftwood, basically. Nice idea, really though. really nice, isn't it? They look really exactly. rustic, because you're really into this kind of nice, environmentally kind of... Exactly, and it's all, it's, I keep saying it's already got a woodland feel to the area, yeah, nice. so you might as well work with it. Nice. Any other problems or anything? Yeah, look down here, mate. <laughs> oh, fantastic! Well, annoying. No, that's no, no, what do you mean annoying? Well, it's in the wrong place. I don't care. <laughs> we don't want it there. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Bit of wildlife in the exactly. garden. That's, that's what you need. And talking of wildlife, where's mum? Hey, have they banished you? Oh, you phoned me, have you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lurking behind the shed. Sorry, Wendy House story of my life. Yeah, what have you been up to? Digging, pulling, filling, like a bit of dirt, do I do. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Bossing? Yep. 
Bossing? They're only boys. They're only boys. You've been bossing you around? Yes! yes. i tell you what, though. We're running out of time, so what are you doing standing here talking to me? That's all right. You could worry. We'll get it done. We have some competent people around here, and I'll have to crack the whip if I have to. Well, then, so be it. Need a good boss, you see. That's what they need. Yep. You sort them out, Mum. See you I later. I will. Thank you. Oh, it's all changing your back garden. You can still hear them. Digging, shoveling, doing things with tools. Anyway, you do need the plants. They're over there, and they are the shrubs. No problems recognising this one. It's a fuchsia. Type a Ricartonii. All the colour is courtesy of the hydrangeas. This one produces pink, mophead-shaped flowers and grows to a height of about three metres. And finally, Christmas Box. It's a hardy evergreen, small, bushy shrub with many fragrant white flowers in winter, followed by blackberries in summer. It makes excellent ground cover. I'm standing in the border in your lovely neighbour's garden full of lovely plants. I want you to tell me which plant in here is otherwise known as the butterfly bush. I think it might be there. And what is that plant? It's a buddleia. It's a buddleia. It is a buddleia. Absolutely right. But is that a butterfly bush? It is. You know that, don't you? I think I do. It's the correct answer! <laughs> the shrubs are yours! Rocking and rolling. Well, hey. We've got a project coming up for you in a second. Good with your hands? Well. We're going to find out, aren't we? Okay. But first, I need an invader to take these away. Bear with me. I haven't seen one, have you? They're large, blue, ugly. Now, this paving down here is something just a wee bit different. This wood is actually remnants of the old lumbering days in British Columbia. This wood, believe it or not, has been underwater for about 70 years. What they did was, in the old lumber sites, they filled them up to make reservoirs. And over the last 70 years, these trees have been popping up. They slice it into little pieces like that, and you simply lay it as a paving material. It costs about the same as really good quality paving, and also it contains a natural preservative, so it takes a lot longer to rot. And it's also got a chemical in it that stops insects attacking it. Now, to lay it, you put a bed of sand down, then a bed of gravel, and simply lie them on top and whack them in place. It's quite simple, isn't it? Uh, yeah, they're going down quite well, actually. It's the first time I've ever laid anything like this, ever, I've got to say that. But it goes down really nicely. Give it a whack down with your hammer, just to let it settle down. And that's it. In between these gaps here, obviously they look a little bit dangerous at the moment. I was going to say, yeah, what about... <laughs> yeah, ankle breakers. But no, with the, with the wood that came, or loads of little bits as well, just little off-cuts, simply put them in the gaps, backfill it right up with gravel, so obviously it sits level with the rest of the logs, whack it all down with a whacker plate, job done. Susan, your project takes a lot of bottle. Four, to be precise. Fantastic. And you might recognise the fact that four bottles fits with four children, OK? OK. So it's something for the kids. OK. All right, now guess what you can turn one of those into? Just a mineral water bottle. A watering can. A good guess, but not the right answer. OK. Good job it wasn't for the trees, hey? <laughs> arc, arc. <laughs> arc, arc. Greenhouse. Greenhouse. A little greenhouse. Okay. What you do, OK, is you cut, you've got all the implements you need here, scissors mm -hmm. and secateurs mm -hmm. and whatever, but you cut all the way down one side like that, yeah. leaving one side still there as a bit of a hinge, so it yep. opens. Okay. Put some holes in it, okay. as breather holes. Okay. You've then got compost, you fill one, the bottom half with compost. You've got tomato seeds down there that you can sprinkle in, all the instructions are on the back of the pack. OK. All right, and then, once you've filled them all, you can decorate them, paint them with the paints we've got down there and the brushes, so you can personalise them to each of your kids. OK. And then you can have them inside, on the windowsill or whatever, not in too much direct sunlight, but nice and warm, and they can have races to see who grows the fastest. And then you can pluck them all out and put them in little pots and then out into the garden and so on. OK. Yeah? Have you ever no done that before? Never. So it's a cracker. They're going to love you for it. I'm going for it. OK. There you go. Okay. I've got a little job to do myself. OK. So you crack on with this I'll come and check on you later. All right? Yeah. Go to it, girl! Looking very nice. Yes. Get I'm making, I'm making some kind of fort. No, it's an enclosed, arched, semicircular seating area. Very nice one. Yes. Problem is, though, mate, there's nowhere to sit at the moment. But this will be very good for you know that exercise you put your ball behind your back, uh, and then you go up and down <laughs> the wall like that. Not too you're hard, not, it's not set yet. Is it not? <laughs> no. I'll <laughs> better not do that then. Now, 
job time for me, because Susan's doing her job, her little project over there. OK. Um, actually, as you pointed it out, yeah. there's no bench here yet. True. <laughs> Looks as if I might be making one. I though. think so. Now, now, now. So we've got names. We've got... Tomatoes. What on earth did you call one of your children tomatoes for? Well, I didn't. I called the bottle with tomatoes oh, right. potentially in it. And these ah. are the tomatoes that they look a bit Halloween. Ah. They've got a bit trippy. OK, OK. So, but um, don't worry about that. No, that's only a detail, Absolutely. isn't it? So you've put the old compost in the bottom and you've put the seeds in. Six millimetres down. According to the instructions. Yes. But you seem to have painted the top. Yes. So how's the light going to get through to the plants then? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But don't mm. worry about that. It's a detail. It's a detail. It's a detail. You, you can work it, it. I'm, They might grow. Yeah. They, so that's the tomatoes. You could turn them upside down, obviously, and put the compost in the bottom and then have the top as the... I think we might do that. You could do that, To get them you? to grow. It's a very good effort and you're very artistic. Top job. You can pop indoors. Ta da And very shortly, I'm going to show you the garden. <gasps> All right, you're very excited. I am very excited. You should excited. be, because they have done a top job, let have me tell you. Yeah, pop inside and I'll send your mum in in a minute. Okay. All right, good on you, girl. So, where is the skip? Now, at this point, I normally tell you about my favourite plants. And what we've got here is a hydrangea. And if I'm perfectly honest with you, I don't really like them, especially when they're a the really garish colour like this. But this is a children's garden, and children love colour. So I've got one either side of this archway that's just going to draw them into the garden. Another top tip for you. Now, Susan's little girls might really like the pink variety, but she's got a little boy as well called Sebastian. Now, obviously, blue is a boy's colour, so what he can do is just place a few old copper coins around the bottom that will soak down into the soil and eventually turn the flowers blue but next to it is one of my real favorites now this is hosta fortunii albo picta now i love hostas they're great in a woodland setting like this because they're like a semi shade they also like quite a moist soil which is why we've put all this bark chip around because that's going to help retain moisture in the soil now another thing with hostas this one is variegated if you keep it underneath the tree it will flower beautifully if you move it slightly out in towards the sunshine the variegation in the leaf will become more apparent and the flowers less so it's a really sweet little plant <laughs> You'll be admiring the very rustic design of this bench. It's just got four legs and planks on the top, you see. Anybody can make a bench like this. And you'll have spotted how, actually, it doesn't follow the curve of the back wall that was so elegantly built by the invaders. And there's a very good reason for that. Problem is, I have absolutely no idea what it is. Over here is Alan. Now, we've managed to get Alan over, who's one of the head honchos of the Nottinghamshire beekeepers. Alan. Bumblebees. Yes. Down here. Bumblebees. What do we do? Because we obviously well, want to protect them, the but we don't want the kids obviously messing yes. around with them. They're as little as possible. I've just cleared the hole, and there's one or two of them see coming out just to make sure who it is and that we're not doing them any injury. Um, if we put something around it, probably a piece of Y netting or some pieces of wood round, just to keep the, let the children know. Right, so you can keep the hole open. And keep it open so they can come and go. They won't bother the children at all. If we put that in like that. That's right. So the hole's, can get the hole's still open. Yeah. Dress right, that yeah. up like that. Oh, yes, they like that. Fantastic. Alan, thank, thank you very you. much. Norma, where are you? Oh. Hello, what was that? Hiya. What are you doing in there? Oh, I was having a wonderful time. Were you? Yeah. You're going to have an even better time now, <laughs> excuse me, for being so bold. Making yourself at home. Yes, thank you. Nice, is it? Mm -hmm. Do you think your Susan would like it? Wonderful, yeah. I think she would for chilling out in mm. the garden. OK, she'd like that and also she's very keen on her butterflies. Yes. But to keep the butterflies in the garden, you don't want to use any insecticides. Best form of natural insect killer is the ladybird. Mm -hmm. OK, so we've got a load of stuff here to attract ladybirds into the garden. Because, you know, the average ladybird will eat 4,000 aphids in its lifetime. If you get this question right, all the goodies go to Susan. Get it wrong, they all go in the back of my car. OK? I feel like I can hardly see you down there. <laughs> He's still there. There you are. Good. Right, here's your question. Yeah. For all the goodies, the hammock, the nesting box, the buddleia, all the books and all the stuff to attract the ladybirds, OK? Mm -hmm. The question is... Bluebells are traditionally found in which habitat? Is it 
coniferous woodland, deciduous woodland, or alpine woodland? No, it's not the first, but um, I would go for deciduous. You're going for deciduous woodland? No, alpine, alpine. Could I change my mind? No, you alpine. can't. I'm sorry, but you can't <laughs> change your mind. And you know why you can't change your mind? Yeah. Because deciduous is the correct answer. <laughs> so that is yours. That is yours. Those are yours. And there. There. That's yours. Thank you. So there you go. Have a lovely time. Give them all to Susan. Thanks very much. <laughs> Okay, describe for me very briefly what that far corner of the garden looked like first thing this morning. Badly grass needed, barren, a mess. Wendy House didn't look good, did it? Wendy House was a bit dilapidated. Yeah. Was a bit, yeah. a bit on the shed like Not kind happening. of. Yeah. yeah. And now is your chance to have a look at your new garden. Take your hands away and open your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my garden. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, the sea. And Mum obviously won you. The hammock and all the goodies to attract all the ladybirds in and your butterflies and all the things you love. That's thanks to Mum. And it wouldn't have happened without her today. No. Bossing us around, <laughs> guiding us, directing us. <laughs> top foreman. Absolutely. Absolutely top if you, foreman. Anytime you need a job. <laughs> you got the trellising around the back. Kind of curvaceous, that's Sven. Yeah, I mean, because it's... I keep saying it's a woodland sort of style garden, but straight lines really wouldn't have button. worked. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, no, you're right. It's your garden. <laughs> it's your garden. What have you just spotted? The Buddleia. There, by the tree. Yeah, right down yeah. at the back there. That'll fill up quite a lot as well and sort of fill a, you know, a hole where the trellis wow. is hiding at the moment. Got a seating area with a nice kind of um, secluded backdrop out of wood as a screen. Bench. And a tire swing! Oh, yes. <laughs> Went back up again. How similar or different is it to what you had in mind? It, it's not similar to what I had in mind at all, but it's fantastic. I mean, everything we've used in it is all natural as well, isn't it? It's, it's really all important. Perfectly yeah. natural materials. I mean, even the the paving's actually old timber that sort of was from an old lumber yard that was underwater for 70 years and things like that. It's I mean, that driftwood, look at how much character. You think yeah. that's been there for donkey's years? Mm. Yeah. Six years of waiting. You only had to wait nine hours for us. Nice. <laughs> Unbelievable. Tremendous achievement, and if mm. I say so myself, because I've done excellent work. <laughs> <laughs> Another job well done there, Steve. Top job, mate. Good effort, Sven. Yeah, it looks nice really one. nice. It's kind of like British country meets Scandinavia in the city. There we go. Nice. It's and a bit you... like how my parents met. And you know that? Oh, is it? <laughs> really? Another one sort of. Listen, um, how are you getting home, by the way? Uh, I ain't got my car. Have you got yours? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> well, hey! Hey!